Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mies New Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create some rock-solid selections inside Resolve. So, we're in Resolve 15 right now. This works in Resolve 14 as well. There's one little thing we're going to talk about that's not in Resolve 14, but it's not really that important right now. But anyway, so we've got this shot. It doesn't look like it should be too bad to qualify, so, you know, normally a lot of people will Alt-C, create a new node with a circle window, and, you know, do this thing, say so you want to bring the face out a little bit more. Increase the gain a little bit, decrease the lift, contrast, whatever. But if we turn our little viewer off, you can see that it's also brightening up these areas around the face. And we might not want that. So you've got a pretty distinct little circle around there. So then what you might do instead is, you know, turn off your circle power window and reach for a qualifier instead. So we'll hit Shift H so we can only see this node. And we'll click and drag along the skin. You see, we're getting a lot of stuff that's not skin in here. There we go. So that's a good spot. But we could still do better. So instead of just trying to rely on your little uh, dropper here, what you can do is go down to your qualifier and you can do things like decrease the width of the hues that are being selected. So you see we're getting bits of green that are melting away there. Move the center over more towards the skin tone. So the hue is how red, green, and blue, whichever pixel is. And you can see we have got the saturation, which is how vibrant the pixel is. So if we take out some of the lower saturated stuff, you can see some of those areas that are more white disappearing. Maybe if we allow a little bit more higher saturated stuff through, something comes through. Nope, we don't really need that, so we can bring this down. I don't think that this is going to help us out too much, because I think most of it is right around the same saturation area. And then we've got our luminance, which is how bright or dark the pixel is. So we can take some of the lows. I'll bring them back in a little bit, actually. Sort of cleaning up this area. And we're going to want more of the highs in because there are these little bright spots on our skin that aren't being selected in there. So we can bring the highs back and you see we weren't selecting those spots on our nose before. But now we're also selecting more spots that are outside of what we want to highlight. And it's still looking a little bit dirty out here. So we can go over to our matte finesse controls and we can increase our blur radius some. And that'll soften out the transition. So if I Alt Shift Z to go one to one here, you can see... Blurring this softens up those edges. This shot doesn't really need any denoising. It's pretty clean, but if you turn that up, it's a similar process to blurring. So we'll just have a little bit on there, a little bit of blur. And now this other control is really cool. I don't really use it that much in my current workflow. It's a new Resolve 15 feature, and it's these uh, matte finesse modes. So we've got shrink, which is going to take away all these little, they're not called fireflies in Resolve, but they're sort of like these little bright spots that pop up. So if you just bring our radius up, you can see those start to melt away. You don't want to go too hardcore on that because it can sort of get you in trouble. You can also do a black clip with that, which will, you can see, especially looking around here, that'll sort of add contrast to the mat. See, that's looking pretty decent. We'll blur it out a little bit more. And now... We still have all this other stuff being selected around here. So we won't have the circle around the face, but we've got all these other other bits that are being blown out. So if we you know, increase the brightness, you see there's, you know, maybe you like that, maybe you don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine this qualifier that we have with the mask that we had before. And now you've got yourself a really rock solid qualifier. I don't like what this guy's doing too much. And we'll reduce the denoising some. And then increase the blur a little more. There we go. That's looking a little bit nicer. So we can move our mask around a little bit. This shot doesn't move that much, but we'll track it just because it's a tutorial. And you'll probably end up having to track a shot. So turn off perspective 3D because this shot doesn't need it. I'm tracking forward and tracking backwards. You see there's not much movement. But a lot of times there is movement. So we've got that. And now if we you know, do things, increase the gain a little bit or pop out, if we zoom in, turn off a little circle thing, you can see it really cleanly just brightens her up. So just combining a couple little things together, you can create these really excellent keys. And then, of course, you can use this key in other stuff. So Alt-O, get an outside node, and we can make the rest of the scene, you know, a little bit on the green side or how about on the warm side? That'll be a little more fun and make it a little bit darker. So it looks more like a a sunset evening thing. She looks a little bit bright in this now, so we'll just pop the gamma down a bit. It fits in a little better. 
and decrease the contrast some. And then, you know, we can add one final vignette around everything, Alt-S. Let's make it nice and big because the composition of the shot is sort of average at best. So we'll fix that in color, which too many people want to do. I'm not bitter. That's why people pay me money. Fix stuff. All right. Got that. Invert it. Go down. Nice. And now, now it's a shot. Now you can do a grade or you can be lazy or just leave it like it is because you know, this is sort of cool. Uh, she needs a little more saturation in her face. Bring that up. There you go. Now she fits. And, you know, I'm just going to add a LUT to this just for, for goofs. We'll add something cool like neutral film 08. It's a little bit much. A lot of time LUTs are a little bit much. That's pretty cool. See, this one is, you know, really nice for brightening up skin. And we just turn it down a little bit. And now it's just, you know, a little bit dreamlike, a little bit surreal, nice. If this wasn't a tutorial, we'd probably turn this down a little bit because it's a little bit much. And now it looks, you know, it doesn't look too much like the color is just went haywire on it. It looks a little bit like that, but you know, it wouldn't be a fun tutorial if, if it was subtle. So I hope you like this tutorial. Hope you learned something. I know this is a very important fundamental color technique I'm doing a few more sort of basics tutorials because I've realized that I don't have a lot of those out there. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Tell me any sort of things that you want to see done, any features or grades you want to see highlighted. Comments is probably the best place for that. You can also head over to Twitter or Facebook and drop me a line there. Also, check out meesnewmedia.com slash products. We've got all sorts of good stuff. You saw me use one of the LUTs from the Swiss LUTs pack on this. We've also got light leaks and optical element distortion things. It's a good time. So, you know, meesnewmedia.com slash products. Check it out. So once again, I have been Theo with Meesnewmedia. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.